Hi everybody, welcome back on today's video. Today we're going to be practicing some high register. In the last video I gave you an exercise and then I started talking a lot and blabbering about the high register, what you should do, what you shouldn't do, why it should go step by step, why range is about playing with sound consistency throughout the range of your instrument and not just playing high notes or low notes, it is the whole register of your instrument that is important so that you can apply it in musical context. This is what's the most important when you practice your instrument is that you know why and the aim, the purpose has always to be uh, relative to music. We want to make the most beautiful music ever and if we want to play some repertoire that goes up and down that's cool um, but it's not just playing high notes just for the sake of playing high notes. This is not what we do on this channel. There's a lot of other channels that focus on this, so... <laughs> I'm not gonna rant again, that was last video. Uh, but hi, if this is the first time we meet, my name is Raf. This is the Trombone Lab, and on this channel we do a lot of equipment reviews, we do some arrangements for brass instruments, and we play some exercise, technical exercises, for brass instruments, trombone in particularly sometimes, but not always. In this video today we're going to be doing high register, it's applicable on trombone, bass trombone, euphonium, baritone, whatever it is that you're playing, you can apply that exercise. So if this is interesting to you, please consider subscribing to the channel and press this little bell button so that you're notified every time I post new content. Also, if you want to get directly in your inbox all the PDFs, of the exercises that we play on this channel, then uh, check out my Patreon page. I will link it down below. What is cool with this Patreon page is that not only you get the exercises, but you get to send me those exercises and I will send you some feedback. So you get one-on-one -on -one feedback and that really helps a lot of my students to make faster progress. Not only because they send me feedback and I tell you what to do to improve, but also because I found that they practice uh, those exercises deeper. They concentrate better and they really try to go deeper into the exercise, not just playing it through. So in today's exercise, uh, what I wanted to show you is a very, very simple exercise. It's going to be actually very fast, but it, uh, to show you. The example is going to be very fast, but it's going to take a long time for you to, to practice it. So I'm going to show you how it goes. Basically, we're going to do a chromatic scale. Very, it's very simple, right? We're going to do a chromatic scale and we're going to stop on each note and slide really, really slowly to the next note. And the reason why is, again, it's like what I said in the previous video, it's what I say in every single video that has to do with range. You have to practice step by step. So if you want to play that high E flat, you're going to have to be able to play the high D. And if you want to play the high D, you're going to have to play that high D flat, etc., etc. Right? So it's not only about going to the high E flat, it's about, or to the high F or whatever, it's about getting there progressively, it's about getting there with a full sound, getting consistent in your sound uh, until, you know, until you actually get there. So we're going to start this exercise, um, I'm wondering where we should start, maybe on the B flat, so this one. And what we're going to do is that we're going to always go to a position where we're able to gliss to the next note. So the B flat here, we're not going to be uh, able to do anything because it's the first position. So we're going to go to the fifth position for that B flat so that we can go to the B natural. Go as slow as you need. Take as much time as you need. Don't put a metronome, don't look at your watch. Take as much time as you need so that the sound is at the same quality on that B flat as on that B natural. So now we're not very high, so it's not so hard. I also have a bit of water in my trombone, so I'm gonna empty it in that happy plant back there. Um, and we're gonna continue. A little word that I wanna say, uh, there is movement when you jump from one or two octaves. There shouldn't be a shift, I always say, there shouldn't be a shift, but there will be movement in the position of the jaw, there is going to be a movement in the tongue when you're going to play in the high register, of course, the tongue is going to go up a little bit, much like when you whistle. If you do this, you will f uh, very well feel, you will feel very well that movement of the tongue. Um, and there will be some changes in their airflow. It's going to be faster 
uh, or if you go down, it might, it might get slower, it depends how much resistance, if you play with the triggers or not. There's a lot of things that depend on each other. It's not just like playing uh, high is going to be faster air than playing low. That's not true. We saw it in some previous videos when you want to play those high, those good low C's and low B's, you're going to have to have speed in your air. Um, but it's different kinds of volumes, it's different... Um, you know, you, you have to, you, you have to um, manage your air in different ways. So that is true, that is absolutely true, but when you go from one semitone to the other, the movement is absolutely minimal. So take advantage, if you play the trombone, then really take advantage of this, uh, because you are going to be able to do like minimal movement. The air should be the same, the aperture should be the same, the embouchure should be the same, the way the corners are tied should be the same. Everything is absolutely the same, the only thing that changes is the movement of the slide. So sustain your air and move your slide. Once you're comfortable on that note, move to the next one. want to use a tuner also so to just to make sure that you're at the right place but you, you will hear it not only because you'll hear the pitch but also because um, the way the instrument will vibrate is much fuller when you're playing in tune back to the fourth position, a bit lower actually, for that D. So if I would play it up until, uh, you know, if I would play it more it would take ages, but you get the exercise. So please do it. Uh, if you have any questions, put them in the, in the comments below. Really, again, take your time, take your time, take your time, patience. Be really patient, be really humble, be really humble that no, the sound quality of your notes in the high B flat is not the same as on the F, so practice from that F. If you are on that F, uh, practice it from the sixth position. Always sliding up, always sliding up. If you get to the high B flat, practice it on the third position so that you can really slide to that B. Um, always very, very slow progression, but consistent. And there, this does two things. I talked about it in the last video, but I'm just going to mention it very fast here. This does two things. First of all, it's going to build up your muscles in those notes that you need to play. And second of all, it's going to build up your confidence that you're like, yes, I can play this high B, whatever note, this high B natural. B natural is a hard note. I can't play this B natural because I have practiced it. I've practiced it consistently. It's not just like I played a B natural scale and I kind of hit it up there and went back very fast. Or I kind of practiced this arpeggio, I kind of hit it very fast and then went back. No, I took time on it. I didn't sound very good so I was on the B flat and then I slid very very slowly to that B natural until it was good. And then when it was good, I went from that B natural to that C. And again, until it's good and practiced it and done some long tones in different dynamics, fortissimo, pianissimo, crescendo, diminuendo. You know, like, I always say practicing the trombone is a, is a craft. You have to be like, like a painter. You learn how to paint an ear and you learn how to paint a nose. And once you learn how to paint an eye, an ear and a nose, and you can kind of paint a face. But you know, like, it's little by little and it's all in the one purpose of making beautiful music. It is not in the po purpose of hitting some high notes just, you know, to boost your ego or whatever. It is not. It is always for the music. So that's it for today's video. If you've enjoyed it, please put a thumbs up. It, I really appreciate those little thumbs. Um, if you've not, or if you have feedback, or if you have questions, or if there's things that you want me to talk about, or whatever, put them in the comments below. I, uh, I, I do answer to every single comment, even the ones that I don't like. 
Um, <laughs> and if you've not done so already, please subscribe to the channel and press this little bell notification button so that you're notified every time I post new content. Usually I try to post every Tuesday, Friday and Sunday and I hope this won't change for quite a while. So yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Practice, practice slow, be patient, be humble and uh, you know, your playing is going to improve over time. Uh, I can guarantee, with no limit, no limit, you're always going to be improving. Take care, ciao.